Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play More Mario 64 with Ben. Um, in the last episode, well, you saw how crappy my memory was, but we also completed Womp's Fortress, and you may have noticed that we're now greeted when we enter the castle by this brilliant flash of light. Now, I know, I know you've heard me in the last episode I said as a kid so much, but... Of course, I had no idea why this was here when I was younger. But then I looked up into it, because my parents never told me never to look up into the sun or you'll burn your retinas out. And when Mario burned his retinas out, he realized this was the wing cap level. So basically, this is what we need to do to get to be able to do mission uh, 5 in bob Battlefield. Now, this mission also, as with every uh, cap mission, there's always an 8-red coin mission. In this case, you're just flying through rings. Oh god, don't even bring- don't even- and don't even mention Superman 64, because I had to put- And wow, I amazingly got it on the first try, where in my, whereas in my practice run, it took me several attempts to do this. So we'll go ahead and step on the wing cap switch here. And basically, it's just telling us that we just got the wing cap. And uh, notice that it didn't play that do -do 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 sound, you know, that sound that it makes when you get uh, a solution correct. Well, since I'm playing the Japanese version, there are a lot of sound effects missing in the Japanese version. Um, and that's one thing I particularly don't like, particularly don't like about the Japanese version, is are the missing sound effects. But nonetheless, we got our wing cap, so now let's go ahead and head back into bob -Omb's Battlefield and complete Mission 5, the one we were unable to do before. Um... Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to, um... say was, um... Oh yeah, it was about my updating schedule. Well, if you watched episode... If you watched episode 1 of this series, you you noticed if you read the description it it said that I'll try to upload every Monday. Well, and I know and and of course you knowing me you know that that never hap that didn't happen obviously. And um, so yeah there was there was another great idea copyright me for wanting to do this during the school year rather than over the summer. But nonetheless here I am playing it during the school year with a crap load of homework. So... No, and now my parents are coming in to interrupt me again, so... I'm in the middle of recording. Okay. But basically, this is Mar in Mario Wings to the Sky. Wow, they actually did come in to, to bitch and moan at me. That's amazing. I'm surprised. Um, well, as I was saying, basically, uh, with Mario Wings to the Sky, the objective here, as you saw with those coin rings, when you hit the middle coin in the ring, you, uh, a number appears, and one, and there's five, there's five of those rings. So what you want to do is hit the middle coin, and pause both. No. Oh my god. Almost went out of bounds. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to go out of bounds and die, because in Mario 64, there are death glitches, where if you... I think some of, like, I'm, the only one I currently know is the one outside the castle, where if you hang onto a certain, like, the edge of the castle, and then hoist yourself up, you'll just die for, so, for no reason. Alright, so with that, we've completed courses 1 and 2, and it is now time to move on to course 3. Let me just get a drink of my milk here. <sighs> okay, there we go. Now, one thing I want to point out before we go in, into the level um, is since I'm playing the Japanese version, you may have noticed that the entrance to Jolly Roger Bay, the picture is different. It's, it's a picture of bubbles. In the American version, this would, or I think it also, it's also in the PAL version, the European version, this picture is of a sunken ship. But in the Japanese, it's a picture of, a, of bubbles. And I just wanted to point that out. And you will see it later in the game. And, you know, obviously in the American version, uh, it's, you know, obviously uh, the ship. Now, a couple things. You might have noticed these black holes in the wall. This one gives you a 1-up. But, 
Before we go into Jolly Roger Bay, another thing that many people didn't know when, it, when they played this game during their childhood was this place right here. You go into it, and we're suddenly transported into this giant aquarium with red coins. Another secret star that I, that I didn't know about until I saw my, my first um, someone else let's play this game. But uh, this is basically... I mean, it's not a... I wouldn't call it a prerequisite. Well, for me, for, for me it's a prerequisite before entering Jolly Roger Bay because uh, it's kind of one of those, you know, secret levels that I just want to get done. But really, it's not that hard. I mean, I, mean, I kind of see this as a... I mean, it's kind of pointless in my opinion, but it was a nice little secret that Nintendo put in. And you'll notice that compared to other water levels, this one actually had actually has a better underwater look to it. If you've played the other levels, and I'll show you what I mean in Jolly Roger Bay, but you'll notice the blue textures around, you know, the, the wall on the walls and how the windows are kind of tinted blue and purple. There's just a lot more. You just get a better underwater effect in this level than you do in the other water levels. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and grab our stars. Er, star. Ugh. But, uh, and, um, now we'll continue on into Jolly Roger Bay. Um, and we do have 16 stars, so I could just speed run this right now and beat the game with 16 stars. But since this is not a speed run, we're gonna go ahead and enter Jolly Roger Bay. In the English version, Mission 1 is called Plunder Into the Sunken, sunken Ship. And, um, basically, uh, you'll notice that, let me just go underwater so you can see what I'm talking about. See, if you notice underwater, you don't get that bluish effect that you did in the aquarium, but basically down here, there's a sunken ship. Alright, so what are you supposed to do? Well, they say to plunder in it. How, though? You got this eel, you know, in one of the windows blocking the way. Well, again, it's another thing that, you know, many people didn't get during their childhood, but what you have to do is swim by the eel like I did, and um, then you gotta come up here back to the surface, and then swim back down, and you'll notice that instead of being in the open window, the eel is now actually swimming around. Um, again, don't run into him or else you'll probably, you'll end up dying, most likely. So you go in through this window, and you're inside the sunken ship. There's also a gl oh yeah, and then of course, um, there's these treasure chests, which you have to open in the correct order to get the star. Basically, it's this, well, just, just copy what I do. If you're, if you've never played this game, again, just, as I said, just copy what I do. Um, and, um, can I please open the treasure chest? There we go. And then, um, a way to expedite, because, you know, normally you would have to walk up these platforms and jump on them, and, you know, your timing would have to be alright and whatever. But, um, you, but, yeah, you basically they give you enough time so that you can swim while there's still water there, and, um, you should be able to get the star, no problem. Here we go! Ah, <sighs> strawberry milk tastes good. Um, anyways, um... So let's go ahead and go back in. I'm not sure if we'll have time to finish Jolly Roger Bay today because the hundred coins can be a bit tedious. But um, none. But uh, I've said nonetheless too much as well. But let's go ahead and go into mission two. Can the eel come out to play? Oh, one thing I didn't mention about the eel in the previous episode. Um, another childhood memory is how literally it scared the crap out of me when I was a little kid. I mean my. I mean, it even scared my mom. That's that's how that's how creepy that eel was as a as a kid. So basically, my message to Nintendo, you know, what the hell? <laughs> Why would you put a freaking eel? Ah, uh, uh, never mind. For this mission, basically, for the eel, can the eel come out to play? You're supposed to just wait here till he comes out, and then touch the star on his tail. Without, of course, without hitting him, or else you'll take damage and most likely die. But as you can see, it's not that hard of a mission once you figure it out. Um, and it really only takes about two seconds. And once again, we managed to get it without getting any coins. So yeah, we're on a roll today. Um, mission three. Actually, I don't remember what mission three is in the English version. <laughs> If I'm 
not mistaken, though, I think this is the one where you're supposed to go into the little secret area. Um... God, I'm saying um too much. Uh, down into the secret area, which I'll show you where it is. It's where the sunken ship was. And if you come down here... You'll notice there's a little opening here. We're gonna go ahead and go in through this opening. And we are in, we're transport, transported into a magic cavern where the magic happens. Actually, no, I don't know. But notice one thing. I'm gonna be quiet for, for a second so you can hear the difference in the music. If you notice, there's a bit of a beat to the music now. You can hear there's a drum going in the back, a little drum going in the background. So, and that's that's one of the cool things about Mario 64 and how it revolutionized the video game industry was, um, you know, how the music changed depending on if you were underwater or on land. And yeah, again, this mission is not hard either. Just copy the order I did to open the treasure chest. It's the back one. It's back, right, left, front. Here we go. I hope that was the right mission, though. But again, I'm playing the Japanese, and it was funny because I actually got a comment on um, mission on the first episode of this LP, and um, yeah, that was that was the right star. Um, but on the first episode of this LP, and it said go to Japanese class. Well, I'm actually learning Japanese with Rosetta Stone, and. Um, well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't mean to talk about my personal life too much, but um, I'm gonna tell you some, I'm gonna tell you guys something that will literally make you, well, okay. Well, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a big surprise to a lot of you, but to my best friend, uh, he always laughs his ass off at me because I have never had a girlfriend in my life, not one. And if you really want to be a dick, you could say, oh, because you're ugly and, you know, pretend as if this is Spongebob and make me sit up, stand on top of my pineapple under the sea and scream, I'm ugly and I'm proud. No, I'm getting off track again. But yeah, nonetheless, I've never had a girlfriend. Uh, and, um, well, I really hope she's not, I really hope this person is not watching this video right now because, uh, I might say something stupid, uh, because I don't know how to flirt. Yeah, there's another horrible secret. Alright guys, you, you got it out of me, okay? You got it, okay? I don't have a girlfriend. There, I said it. You happy now? I admitted it. I admitted to the whole YouTube nation that I do not have a girlfriend. <sighs> wow, that was a... That was unnecessarily loud. Um, okay. Basically, let's just get back to the game and stop talking about my personal life. Uh, I do that way too much. Anyways. So basically, most of these red coins that you're going to find are inside the clams. Uh, now, as you know me, I'm going to try to go for the 100 coin mission as well. One thing I do find a little weird about uh, when you get on the land here is how the instrument, how the other instruments don't start playing. And, wow, is there really an... Oh, okay, there's a ledge there. I, at first I thought there was an invisible wall there, and I was just thinking, why would they put an invisible wall there? Alright, yeah, I forgot to hit that box at the beginning. Um, so, uh, it's gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and continue the commentary here, but. Uh, I know this ring of coins, if you've watched the verses of Super Mario 64, which I'm actually a big fan of, uh, so Tyler and Josh, if you're watching this, um, I just wanted to say you guys make awesome videos and keep up the good work with your verses videos. And. But Tyler, seriously, dude, get a little more mature. <laughs> no, you know, no disrespect, but, you know, screaming fuck my nipples when you fall off in, uh, in, uh, Cool Cool Mountain. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, what, it's 1993, 1997, so that would be, yeah, here's my awful math skills. That would be about four years. So, uh, so, 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 and, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, other, no, other than that, your videos are great. Keep it up, and, um, really excited to see the rematch of Super Mario Sunshine Versus, which, if you're watching this video now, 
that video should be going live momentarily because um, I was just on, I was just watching the uh, promo again for the vid for the Super Mario Sunshine two uh, versus number two and um, and uh, what was I gonna say again I can't remember what I was gonna say oh and uh, apparently Tyler left a comment saying that um, you know it was a seven gigabyte file and it was taking it would take hours on end to upload which makes sense I mean like for me that's another reason uh, aside from you know me having a lot of schoolwork to do uh, why a lot of my why I don't really upload frequently is because um, you know my first of all my computer has a 320 gigabyte hard drive I built my laptop myself and I still to this day feel like a dumbass for not putting in a bigger hard drive because I thought I would be doing let's plays on my old desktop gaming computer but then of course my server died and so I had to switch to using my um, I had to switch I had to use my server as my gaming computer and am I missing something wait a minute did I not get a red coin oh yeah okay I didn't get this one yet so there's the eighth coin Where are the rest? Oh, wait, I know where they are. I know where they are. I'm stupid. They're over here. Uh, for a second, I thought I was going to end up like Tyler in Super Mario 64 Versus, where he couldn't find, he couldn't figure out that the, there were red coins around the one pillar, and then ended up getting yelled at by Josh. That's what I fucking told you, you dumbass! Yeah, it was actually pretty funny. Um... And um, it ended up turning into Josh is a clam, where somebody basically used. Well, if you watch versus animated, um, you will note you'll notice uh, that uh, somebody decided to uh, make a flash animation called Josh is a clam, and basically they literally took the sound effects of Josh yelling at Tyler, and. Um, Dubbed a and made, made his face into a clam. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're get, we're about 17 minutes into the episode now, and we're already on mission five. So I think I'm just gonna finish up Jolly Roger Bay. Um, so for I mean, yeah, I mean basically the levels on the uh, first floor of the castle aren't so bad. They're actually pretty easy. And uh, okay, yeah, this is the one where you have to blast to the stone pillar. Uh, this level, I. Uh, with the emulator, it's a little tricky because, as I said before, and I'll show you when, what I mean when I go in the cannon. But um, basically, unlike on the on the actual Nintendo 64, you, with the the an having the actual analog stick is uh, makes the, your makes the system capable of more sensitive movement. So it's not like on a keyboard where you only have four arrow keys to control, you know, the movement of the analog stick. And, you know, as a result, the precision isn't as good. As you can see, it's very hard. Well, not, I mean, I got it pretty fairly easily this time, but... Basically, what you, basically the idea is you want to blast to the stone pillar, which I just grabbed the tip of it, and I don't know how Mario's hands are not hurting with a giant spike going through them. But nonetheless, there we go. That's mission five. Now, mission six is another mission that uh, we cannot do at this moment because it requires the metal cap. It's in the English version. It would be called, um, what was it called? Uh, oh, through the jet stream. It does require the metal cap. However, let me just get a drink. However, um, there is a glitch, or I guess you, I guess it's not really a glitch, but you can. Get the uh, through the jet stream star without the metal cap, but I'm not going to go into how unbelievably difficult it is to do that. I've seen you know experienced speedrunners get it within seconds, but every time I try, I end up failing miserably. So with that, I'm going to end this episode here. Again, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in part three. Have a nice day.